Hey, yeah, I think that's better. It's better. Yeah, sort of. Maybe. I mean, why? Well, I mean, I'm in the crib now, so. so. Okay. You can see me and shit. Yeah, I think we're better now. Mm -hmm. Trying to sit it somewhere, walking. Hold up. Okay. I want to fucking, I want to roll up some fucking weed right now. <laughs> Do your thing. Right now. Huh? I'm going to wait for mine. Yep. Same. I think we're, I think we're business now. You good? Yep. So I still got my fucking badge on from earlier in this, huh? No doubt. Now it's time to toss it and get get uh, time to relax. Yeah, it's a lot of shit happening earlier today, but you know, no doubt. Now, so we, we, was were, we, uh -huh. we were talking about uh, dancing to writing. Yeah, um, the dancing shit definitely. Pushed it to the limit of where where I felt comfortable with now extending my whole I guess hip hop life I guess what you want to say <laughs> whatever the fuck that is but uh, yeah like I said you know people you know you you your career is you set a goal and. You know, with everything, like I said, with football, you want to win a Super Bowl, you want to whatever, same thing with music. If you ain't trying to reach for some type of, I don't know, success mm -hmm. in the sense of uh, the status of, you know, gold or platinum or whatever the fuck that is, if you ain't trying to do that, then what the fuck you doing? Like, right. Some people have more success than others, but, you know, your contribution to the culture, it is what it is. Exactly. Everybody's not going to be, you know, the hip-hop people, like, such as yourself and me and whoever going to know, you know, who's who. Everybody's not going to know everybody in the sense of who did what. And, yo, like, oh, shit, yo, he did that record or he made that contribution. You know, a lot of people are on mm -hmm. surface of what's happening right now. So... You know, the history part of it, that's where you come in and others come in and be like, yo, you know, it's not for me to be like, yo, who the fuck I am? I don't I don't never do that shit. I just, I, right. it's for the birds. I can, with that, you know, who the fuck I am and what the fuck I did. And I don't have those conversations with people. I just exist in the mix. Like, I don't reinvent myself. I'm on a whole nother green shit. Like, I'm on some other shit right now. I ain't even, you know, the past is what got me here, but I don't do well on that. Like I said, if I do a show like right now, I'll probably do like three songs from the 90s. One of them will probably be Saturday Night Live verse, Flows is Tight, and probably something else. Everything else is going to be like songs that I've been recording since like, I don't know, like 2004 till now. Mm-hmm. So like 16 years of just different shit, hearing, just trying different shit, listening to shit, seeing what direction. This music is always shifting, so you can't say you're going to just sit in that one particular groove or whatever. So I'll try this, see how this sound, this shit. You know, it'll be a group of shit to come in where niggas ain't sampling no more, then sampling will come back. Then You know what I'm saying? So you got to kind of like fit somewhere in the middle of all of that shit. And that's what I've been doing. Just sitting back, listening, watching. See if there is a lane. If I didn't think it was a lane, I'll be like, yo, fuck it. I got plaques already. Fuck it, I contributed. I can stop now and be like, yo, fuck it. I ain't got to do nothing else. But my love for the music, Big Ezo, my bro,
Love Him to Death. We're putting some shit together right now. A couple of projects. One is called Snap. That shit is about to... I don't even want to talk about it. <laughs> I don't even want to talk about this shit right now. This shit just makes me like, oh, man. I don't even know if niggas was even prepared. Right. Because a lot of people see me as the producer, you know, not the MC. And I'm like, I don't know what the fuck y'all been listening to, but maybe it's a tad bit abstract to the left sometimes and you don't catch all the double entendres and all the other little slick shit I be saying, but right. I, don't know, yo, I think my balls is kind of up there. I think that now is worse than it was before. I didn't know what the, I didn't even basically even know what the fuck I was doing before. So right. I was just trying shit. You know, I know I had the voice, I know I had some type of style, but I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know how to harness it. I didn't know how to make it what it is now. Then I take years, you know, like what the fuck? I don't think, you know, it's this, it's not but so many child prodigy rapper mu musicians that just hit it right away. It takes some time, you get better, you grow. You know, it took it took some time, but I'm my own worst critic. So I listen to what my ears says before anybody else's ears. Right. Not to say that all ears don't matter. Not to make that a cliche or some shit, but my ears first. I know what's dope. I know what's ill. My my DJ, my bro knows what ill. I'd rather listen to him tell me, like, get the fuck out of here, bro. Like, bro, like, <laughs> we can't do that. I'll listen to that and know where he's coming from when he's telling me that. Right. Not, not that he's just telling me that, like, yo... Yo, son, like, you need to give it up, bro. Nah, he's not telling me that. He's telling me, like, yo, bro, like, if you're going to do this shit, you got to come with it, bro. Right. You can't half-ass. You know? Everybody. I don't know why. I don't know why niggas put this stipulation on us as rap artists or as hip-hop, the hip-hop culture, because... When you say, oh, a nigga is old or too old or sh to rap or to do whatever. I'm not saying that because I'm from the older side now, but when you think about it, it's like, who's too old to do music? Like, why, why, how would you be too old to do music? Just because you put rap in front of it, it's still music though it's just rap music so why would someone be too old if they still have the talent to do music or rap music i don't understand that part when you know we was the people that we was listening to or our parents was listening to was young and they watched them grow like the stevie wonders and the patty labels and all of those they would saw them when they was younger and they watched them grow to where they are now so it's the same thing with us a lot of our artists that we were listening to were actually older than we thought they were when we were listening to them like the chuck d's and the, you know what i'm saying they were actually older but they still was able to cater to the younger and the older demographics right you know, I think the lyrics were more for the older people and then the beats and the, you know, the switching up or the samples and all of that other shit was drawing in the other people. So they had a formula. So it doesn't really matter about the age factor of it because I'll tell you right now, there's no way I could perform on stage for an hour and 20 minutes with songs you never heard of. But right. I could do it. Right. A lot of motherfuckers would give out about 30 minutes or so. They'll be like, the energy is not good. I live this shit. I bleed it. So it's a little bit different. I still feel I left some shit on the table. I'm not trying to be a star because I'm not sacrificing nobody in my family. I'm not killing my, my moms for money or, you know, letting my son get hit by a car in the middle of the street. I'm not doing none of that shit. So... I'm going to take this route of we just going to do good music and have people pay for us to go and perform in foreign places. That's right. how I look at it right now. It ain't, I'm, it's, I'm past that star shit. Everybody want to be, you want to be a star when, uh, 
mm-hmm. when you were younger, when you living with your moms, that's that was your dream. You're like, yo, I want to be a star. I want to get signed. I want to be on star. I want to be on TV. I get, did all of that shit, you know, without even really saying it. Like, you know, Soul Train, MTV, yo, MTV raps, you know, all of that shit without actually saying, yo, I wanted to do that. I I, I just wanted to have good music contribute to the coach and then let everything else take care of itself. Never went into it saying, I wanted to be rich. I wanted to, you know, sell a million records or help somebody sell a million records. No. I was just happy with somebody saying, yo, look, I want to fuck with one of your beats. Or I want you to, be, you know, have a, come be a feature um, on one of these songs. Like, you know, being one of the first people to, we, you know, the Blues Brothers, one of the first Outside producers outside of the Wu Tang umbrella that produce for you know on a Wu Tang record, and the same thing with you know I felt when Duck Down gave me the opportunity to be on Duck Down Presents because I was not a part of Duck Down Records, you know what I'm saying? So that that sort of kind of like you know was an olive branch and extension like yo that's my that's we want you to be a part of our family, you know in a sense. But I never really signed with Duck Down, but that's my family to to the day I die. So. Right. Those type of opportunities and shit like that, you know, a lot of artists don't get and they don't cherish. And you look back at this shit and I'll be like, yo, nigga, like, you was the only one that was kind of like on the outside, like on that record, like on that whole album. And, you know, you look at the old Dirty Bastard shit afterwards and you look back at all the shit, it's like, damn, son, like, you, you, you did some shit, like, that should be recognize or talked about, but I don't never go around bragging like, yo, look at me, like the point to me and shit. Like, I don't do that shit. If you know rap music and you know hip hop underground shit, you'd be like, yo, I know, yo, that's Lord Digger. But for the average on surface fan that knows all the, the stars, you know, I'll just blend in as a nigga smoking weed. They'll be looking at Kanye West and they'll be looking at this nigga and they'll be looking at that nigga. It's all good. But when it comes down to that shit, you put us all in the studio to make them. We, it'll, it'll be a, it'll be a competition. I can tell you that much. Right. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody gonna say yo oh shit. The shit that that digger and them got is whack. That shit is trash. I doubt that, bruh. Doubt that very seriously. But you know, with the landscape of how music has changed in the last. Years, the last 15 years, 20 years, whatever. I just stay steady. You got just keep picking the shit. You got a pretty lengthy discography. If you don't mind, we're going to go back and, and get some of your best memories of these projects. Is that cool? Shoot it. Right. Um, Slaughterhouse, uh, what were some of your best memories and what was those sessions like uh, making that project? Some of the best memories was actually being in the studio, like on the tail end, coming out of the studio or going into the studio when we we used to see Premier and Guru coming out the same studio. Because we worked at Firehouse, both Firehouses, the one on 28th and the one that was downtown, the actual, that was at fire, actual Firehouse. So, you know, the surreal shit hits me when, you know, I'm in the shit too now, but. I still pay homage and I still got people that will never, will always be etched in my fucking brain from the first time I heard them. And I'm sitting there looking at video music box and Manifest comes on. Now I'm walking in the studio where Guru, you know, was, you know what I'm saying? I'm, this is 1992 shit. Like this is when we were building the album, 1993 and shit like that or whatever around that time. So I'm still a relatively unknown dude. Like I don't nobody knows who Lord Dick is or whatever the fuck that 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 shit just came about at the end of or the middle of ninety two or some shit like that. So to be in the studio recording the Slaughterhouse album while wow. Guru is in I guess you would say the I don't know, waiting room or living room, him and Pamir is walking out. That right there to me kinda like put it to where like, yo, I think you wanted something. Not that I actually made it yet, but I was in a good line to do something if I fucking really put my mind to it. So, yeah. 
that's one of the better memories of actually starting to record Slaughterhouse. Mm -hmm. And rest in peace to Guru, man. That's my dude. Like, for real, for real. Like, no how did, shit. How did life change for Lord Digger after that project? Um, gave me a signature Monica. Like, there's not a fan that doesn't know me, that, that, that knows me or whatever. They see me somewhere overseas or whatever. The first thing that comes out their mouth was what? Lord Digger, the microphone mutilator. So that gave me a signature moment, and now it kind of, like, sticks. Like, I, I, I do this all the time, and I think, like, how many people actually have signature moments that are kind of, like, by mistake? Like, I didn't think that that was going to turn into... That's how people greet me when they see me. That's weird. That's fucking crazy to me. That's the, it, it, it doesn't go any other way but little dicker, the microphone, I, everything I love. Every single time. I don't give a fuck where I'm at. That's how they greet me. So that, not knowing it at the time, that was going to you know, turn into some shit like that. But yeah, that's one of my more signature moments as far as... Uh, you know, record and then and what was so ill about that? I wasn't even supposed to be on that song. Uh, how how did that come about? I kind of like forced the hand because like the beat was playing, and I kind of like just went in the booth and just started saying stuff. And that's how the crazy junkie style was born. It was birthed by me actually being kind of fucking fucked up. Maybe I probably drunk like about three forties before that. Maybe like. Some shit in the lines of that, and I was all I was already jotting some shit down, but it wasn't necessarily to that beat. So I think I just went in the booth and just started saying shit, and Ace was like, "Yo, you know, you could probably get on the song. You got you got some shit. If you got more, you got sixteen or you know whatever." And I was like, I wasn't really sure because I didn't really know how to count balls back then anyway, like that. I think it passed eight. I got confused. I think niggas right now don't even know how to count balls right now. Niggas is like 50 years old. So that's that's just my opinion. I don't know. Niggas be rhyming some awkward shit like 17 and a half. Like, I mean, what the fuck is that, bro? Like, what are you doing? Like, but that's not, that's just me. But yeah, so I ended up on that record by default. Thanks to the 40s. Thank you, uh, Hoffman Riffer. I think I was drinking Private Stock, too, back then. <laughs> <laughs> Hoffman Riffer, nigga. Like, oh, shit. This nigga right here. Lifted. But, yeah. Dope. Saturday night motherfucking live. What kind of uh, reception did you get when that album dropped? What, you mean, like, fans yeah. wise just, like, was in general, art, like, or artist, did artists reach out to get placements from you at this point? Uh, yeah, it was right after, yeah, pretty much after we, because you know we did the, you know, the initial first single was Jeep Ass Nigga that later turned into Born the Road, but yeah, we uh started getting a bunch of shit mm -hmm. all over the place. Like it started with remixes. And um, it worked its way from that to just countless little shit you may know about, shit you may not know about. Some sh a lot of shit that probably didn't make it out because either the artist got dropped, but we got paid for it. It's like, <laughs> it don't count really because it didn't come out. But I'm just thinking about the shit that we did that didn't come out. For for some of us fans that don't know, can you uh, take us back to some of the things that may have not came out that we may not know about? Holy shit. I smoke too much. God damn. It's artists that was on Columbia Records, like some R&B chicks. I can't remember, man. Like, it was right around the times that uh, I can't call their name right now. Ah, oh, man. It was right around the time I was doing the remixes for Mysterious Misfits. They had some R&B groups on Columbia as well, like in, in that realm, and we were doing stuff with them. Um, I had did a joint for Royal Flush that didn't come out there because we do, he they was on um, 